So I did hear about, because I, I had uh, last couple of years, anytime I went into the vet, I came out with Parvo. <laughs> uh, Listen, bro. Listen to what I'm telling y'all. Hear me good. There are some things that I could say I'm not going to say. Yeah, I'm probably going to yeah. stay with you and some more people in an intimate conversation. Right. But, but there is, man, let me tell y'all something. In, if, if, and they can get in the comments. Anybody ever dealt with kennel cough? Mm -hmm. Anybody on this live ever dealt with kennel cough with any dog? Is anybody in the comments saying they ever dealt with kennel cough? Oh, no, 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 it's not. Yeah, it's nobody saying. Uh, but okay, I so let me explain to you what happened to me. I bought a couple of dogs from West Memphis, and I didn't. Okay, but somebody saying no. Okay, that's good. So I, I brought a couple of dogs from West Memphis to breed, and this guy did not have the Bordetella vaccine. Lit my kennel up with kennel cough. Mm. I had about 13 dogs here, 12 of them had it. It's not coming out their nose. Kennel cough is a respiratory infection that a dog could catch, just like they catch a cold or the flu from somebody that has it. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a respiratory infection. If I would have took the dogs to the vet, I would have been out of a lot of money. Oh, yeah. I went to the grocery store and spent $3 and some cent. You hear me? Mm -hmm. $3 and some cent, brother. And I cured all my dogs of Kennecoff in less than 10 days. You what does what? the medication say? <laughs> There must be some active ingredient in there. You knew there was that. The store. medication <laughs> for kennel cough that you get from the vet up to 21 days. I would have been out of a couple thousand dollars. How was I oh, yeah. able to cure it with less than five dollars? And half of the time that they're talking about. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, this shit could get, it get deep. Right. I went over there to Memphis to breed with a guy that had a Corso uh, that worked for the fire department. And I met a brother out of Memphis by the name of Ben, Brother Ben. He has a little small car. He ride around Memphis and make about $4,000 a week, cash money, dealing with people's dogs. Mm -hmm. He taught me how to cure car Parvo without even going to the vet. Mm -hmm. I told a brother, I gave this information to one brother that came to the vet office and he had a, a dog that did not seem to respond to um, ampersillum like he should. That's the main ingredient they use when a dog has parvo. They use ampersillum. What what, what is that? Not, ampersillum is a uh, it's a it's an antibiotic. Okay. That's what they use. They use loperamide, which is something you can go and get out of the grocery store. You can go anywhere and get loperamide. Only thing loperamide does is it stops the diarrhea. Yeah. What does the dog die from? Dehydration. Dehydration, yep. Yeah. So it stops the diarrhea. That's where most of your fluid is coming from, from the diarrhea. Then it uh then you have the lapelmite. Uh, uh, I mean I meant the uh, ampersillum. Okay. Those are the two things. Mm -hmm. If the dog is dehydrated, if you pick the back of the skin up and it falls slow, the dog's dehydrated, they'll give you um uh uh the IV. The IV. Mm -hmm. And some of them, you know, just send you home with it. You got to, every so often, you got to hit the dog, right? Mm -hmm. Man, there's a, there's a remedy. You don't need none of that shit. Yeah. <laughs> All the shit you pay hundreds of dollars for. Take this, use this, come back in two days and get this. We going, bro. There's a guy out of Memphis that know how to cure. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you catch it, if you catch it, First sign of diarrhea, he can even get it. You know, you know when you use a medicine, if it's at the blood stage, most of the time it ain't no turning back. Right. This brother cold. Yeah. So this is what I'm saying when I say, Fabra, those of you all who are saying that you have issues with these vets, I don't want to hear that shit. <laughs> your dog <laughs> is your responsibility. Yeah, you there should. Are so you should many know. Classes you can take to learn how to take care of your own dog. I only take my dog to the vet 
for stuff that is beyond me. That's right. When my clients call me and they say, hey, Taha, is this, I got this issue going on with my dog or this issue. I said, describe it to me. So send me a picture. I said, when you go to the vet, tell them so and so and so and so and so and so. Why? Because the vet is there to make money. A lot of them ain't gonna run a bill up. Uh, I, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you two examples. If Christopher battles, if you on here, he would bear witness. The brother had a dog, a female dog that I was gonna breed too. And uh, right before I got ready, she get ready to come in heat. She had some some leakage, right? Mm-hmm. Y'all know what leakage is. It looked like slimy shit dripping. Mm-hmm. So I said, uh, describe it to me. So on, so on, so on, so on. I said, take them to the take her to the vet, and you're gonna ask them to test her for urinary tract infection. I said, if they test her for urinary tract infection and it's not that, ask them to uh text her for this. Because what you're doing is this urinary tract infection is the cheapest test. If you go to what the second cause could be, it's gonna run your bill up unnecessarily. Mm-hmm. So I could save my clients a couple hundred dollars with my knowledge by telling them exactly what to tell the vet. So he wound up, they wind up being a urinary tract infection. One of the dogs that we just bred that came from my kennel that was in Dallas wind up with uh, an infection, right? I told them, I said, uh, they told me what was going on. They said, yeah, we took it to the vet, but they said it's normal. I said, normal? I said, send me pictures of it. It's so many pictures of it. It was a fucking greenish, had a greenish tint to him. I said, that ain't normal. Take her to another vet. Took her to another vet, and it had, uh, she had a bacterial infection. They gave us some medicine. They got different medicine on the market that won't affect their puppies. That's why I'm saying you got to you got to understand the vet and know what these vets got. All these, these veterinarian officers, they are a practice. Every vet is not going to do the same thing. I've sent dogs around the country, and vets called me and said, y'all gave them a six-week vaccination. What did you give them at six weeks? Everybody don't do it. Everybody really? do their vaccination different. Oh, wow. My okay. Kennel, my kennel, we do six, six week, eight, eight mm-hmm. 12, 12, and 16. 16. That's what we do. At 18 weeks, they consider fully vaccinated. My dogs don't intermingle with other dogs until they have all their vaccination. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? I isolate them till they get two rounds. Then I let them go out in certain places. Mm-hmm. But they don't go everywhere until they're 18 weeks old. Right. Some of you all are getting dogs. You're taking them over Joe Blow house because Joe Blow mm-hmm. got a dog. and You want to show your dog off and that dog ain't got no shots. And yep. now your dog dead and you coming back to the breeder saying it's the breeder problem. Yep. You know, I tell people that buy puppies from me, I say, when you go in the vet, don't even sit them down. No. Them in your arm. Bro, I'm going to tell you what yeah. I did. I took, a, I took, I had to send some dogs out. It was a weekend and I had people flying in and I waited too late to get, to get them, uh, uh, to get them scheduled to get a certificate from my regular two vets that I, that mentor me that I deal with. I had to take them to another vet. Now, I've had, heard about the horror stories coming out of this vet office. Bro, I tell you no lie. I walked in. I walked into the office. They told, there was a lady coming out of the room. They told me, they said, you can go in there. They didn't spray the table down or nothing. I said, no, nah, I can't go in there. No, nope, no. Nope. I said, y'all got to spray that table down with some bleach and water. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they when just I go get, dog to dog. I don't remember what it was. There was a lady that was doing... Uh, a crackhead lady. I'm just gonna be real with you. She's a fucking <laughs> crackhead. Yeah. <laughs> she was doing. She was a receptionist, and she was doing the paperwork, Bruh, She put down on my paperwork that the corso was black. I said, No, that's a black brenda. You can't do that because when they get that certificate, if they get stopped by somebody, they looking at what that is, and if it don't match up, that's somebody ass. Mm-hmm. And those certificates go back, not just to the health department, the state health department, but it goes all the way to the United States Department of Agriculture. That's who certified the best to be able to issue that. So hell no, nah, I don't want that shit like that associated with my kennel. You got to make sure it's right. While I was there, there was a lady that was in there. She was already in there. She saw the puppy. She came. She wanted to play with the puppy. No, you can't play with my puppets. We at the vet mm-hmm. office. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. I don't know why you here? I don't know what you got on your hand. Yes, right. Now, yeah. Come to the vet to keep from getting sick, and they come in there because they sick. Mm -hmm. And I don't want my your dog intermingling with another dog at the fucking vet office. That's stupid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I always tell, I always people tell me, I know how to deal with dogs. I've been dealing with dogs for years. I don't give a damn. <laughs> if you come and buy a dog from me, you're gonna sit your narrow ass right there, and I'm gonna tell you what the expectation is. Mm -hmm. Because people think they know how to deal with dogs, but they don't. Mm -hmm. My cousin just lost a whole litter of bullets. I told him four days before they were born, I said, cuz, I've been putting together two weeping boxes. I said, uh, you know, you could come to the house for about an hour when about almost finished. And we're going to put them together and you could just take one to the house with you. He didn't listen. Bro, he lost the whole litter. Mm. I had a guy that I bred to. Uh, he used one of my males as co owned he has 15 puppets. 15 puppets, bro. He lost all of them before. Mm. And then they tried to get slick and didn't want to give me the puppy that's supposed to be coming to me because they lost so many. My other partner that deal with Corsos, I told him, look, you got to count them days down and do preparation. This female here that had that little, she came in here three days before her due date. Everything was set up. Sanitized the whole room. Brought it in. She hung outside the box and didn't go in the box until the day she was going to have, have the puppies. It's a science to this. You don't have to make all these mistakes if you listen. Mm -hmm. When you do that breed, you count your days down. It's 58 right. to 64 days. Two days before she do, you bring her in, do your bathroom or whatever you're going to do. Set an area up, put it in an area. Make sure that the temperature is right. It needs to be room temperature, not too hot. Not too cold. If you think that you need a, 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 a little heat, put your heat lamp and hang your heat lamp. But monitor the first the first 24 hours if the female is due and she just giving birth, you got to monitor, man. She mm -hmm. might need some help. You might have a puppy getting stuff. If it's closed to the weekend, what you supposed to do? Go to your vet. You're going into the weekend. If your vet is closed, say, hey, I need this. I need this. And I need this because she might have them this weekend now. It's gonna be close. Get the stuff that you need. Why right. you wait until the last minute? Then you call it spamming. I have folks call me. Me and my, my dog is getting having puppies right now. And you calling me at one o'clock in the morning. I don't want to hear that shit. You had yeah. a whole 60 days to prepare. Uh-huh. Right. Why are you what's your, calling? You, what's so your thoughts on C6? That can be done easily that could keep you from having a lot of problems. When them females are pregnant, especially the last 30 days of pregnancy, you got to change their diet. You can't continue to feed them a, a duck uh, food and they got puppies in their stomach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's certain shit you got to do. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm just about through talking because mm -hmm. I, I, the, I tell people, look, do X, Y, Z, make sure you do that. And if you don't listen, don't fucking call me. And tell them uh, you you had talked about this on a uh, uh, on one of your lives about why you don't change. You get your puppy home, why you don't change the food right away? Man, do not change that puppy <laughs> diet for fucking thirty days. Yeah, because a lot of time when people call me and they say my puppy is not eating, they don't change the dog food. When they, when that puppy leave the kennel, the, it's the breeder's responsibility to make sure that that puppy is eating solid food consistently, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The breeder, let me give you some advice. This is why it's important that you know when the people come to get their dog. I have my dogs, them puppies are in there, they're a week old. When they get about three or four weeks, I do an assessment and I see, can they go outside? Mm -hmm. I put them outside in a kennel. Now, before I put him outside, I'm going to go in that kennel, bleach it, clean it, let the bleach sit, 20 minutes, spray it down two or three times. I might go in there depending on the inside. I might paint the inside up because I don't want them to come in contact with nothing bad that the other dog could have done brought it in there. Mm -hmm. Dogs is running in your yard. They can pick up anything. That's right. You have anything run across your property. 
You don't know. Yes. So I isolate them puppies by themselves. And you know other dogs at the fence dealing with them and all this. No, we ain't doing none of that. Mm. When you tell me, hey, man, I'm coming to pick my dog up on Friday. You should already have your vet visit scheduled for Monday. Get your dog checked out. Now, I don't check the dog out. I don't listen for a hard murmur. I didn't looked at the stomach inside. I didn't did all that. But I could miss something. Mm -hmm. My vet could miss something. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? So it's your responsibility to take the dog to your vet when you get the dog to let your, dog, your vet do the preliminary check. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. So my puppies are when you tell me, hey, I'm coming to get that dog Friday, by Wednesday, I'm going to take that dog out. I don't care when I deworm them. I'm going to deworm him again. Final deworm. I'm isolating that dog. I got I got a cage that I put it in that all they poop and stuff fall at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Right? They can't have access to nothing. Because when you got the dog outside, it's stuff blowing into the... Raining good. It's stuff blowing into the cage. A limb may fall off, a, a cocoa bud, and they they eat that, they can throw diarrhea. Some of them mm -hmm. puppies eat inside the doghouse. You got wood dog out there too on it because they start teething. They can yeah. eat that. They can make them throw diarrhea. You don't know where the diarrhea coming from. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. don't want a dog with blood in his stool a diarrhea when you send him home. Mm -hmm. And it could come from a lot of things, including changing that food at the last minute. Right, right. Including... Mm -hmm. Feeding that dog raw meat mm -hmm. with bones in it. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're isolating the dog for at least three days. Here's another problem. When you, when you, there, there are two problems that stem for keeping these dogs in the litter before, from, from a person coming to pick a dog out of a litter instead of picking your dog ahead of time. Number one, them dogs is constantly crossing over each other, boo-boo. I don't care what you say. You go clean that cage, that kennel right now and go to work, them dogs are shitting in there. Yeah, yeah. Them dogs and puppies are walking to each other's shit. So that means the dog got to be isolated to be dewormed. And the dog can catch, if you're not careful, uh, coccidia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had experience with coccidia before. Oh, yeah. Yeah, me too. You know what I'm saying? It's, you can clear it up in 72 hours. 72? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Three days. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You clear yeah. that shit up. You, hey, you clear it up in 72 hours. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. So, and, th and another thing as a breeder, when you go to the vet for an issue, whatever the issue is, you document what you went for, what medicine was, was prescribed, how you administered the medicine, and what was the result. Because if this issue pops up again, like if I have an issue with coccidia, let's say these puppies get up to five, six weeks and they start doing coccidia. Mm -hmm. I could pick up the phone and say, hey, Dr. So-and-so-and-so, hey, I need so-and-so-and-so-and-so-and-so. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, uh, you know, it just all depends on who I'm talking to. Somebody may say, what, what's going on? I said, well, they're doing, they're doing what's supposed to be coccidia. I go down there and get it. Or they could say, uh, they may not say nothing. I got some vets. They was, all right, Muhammad, come get it. I got one vet that don't use the med, don't, don't keep the medicine on hand. I say, hey, I need you to order so and so and so. I know it's going to be in in a few days. I can go right and get it. Yep. I can administer it myself based upon the weight yep. and clear it up. Boy, it's sure is hard to find one of them vets breeder, that'll let you get online, though. If you're a breeder, you got to have a relationship with these vets. Mm -hmm. You do. Do y'all know what law just, just went into effect in Arkansas? No, I don't. The laws are always changing. Now, technically, by law, you don't supposed to send the puppies out nine to eight weeks. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know sometimes we send them out at six. I even send them out sometimes at six. Mm -hmm. After I do a good assessment, I'll send them out at six or seven weeks sometimes. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> it's supposed to be eight weeks, just to be transparent. There's another law that been they've been talking about it for two years. It's in effect now. A lot of the antibiotics that you've been going to the feed store and get, you're not going to be able to get them. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be able to get them. My partner, I use Jones Feed. He just bought the last bottle 
of uh, this particular antibody that they have that comes in the brown bottle, they're not going to be able to get it no more. You see, when the pandemic hit, everybody that was using av ivermectin in the tube was scrambling because they couldn't get it. Mm -hmm. Even right now, ivermectin for horses, they got it regulated where a lot of the feed stores can only order so many. So there's a lot of antibiotics you're not going to be able to get. You need to have a good relationship with your vet. As a breeder, you need to be able to call and get stuff done. They need right. to have you as priority. Yeah. There's certain yeah. vets I can call, even after schedule four, they're going to squeeze me in because they value what I bring to the table. Yeah, yeah. You you, yeah. yeah if I'm you sending them clients. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm bring, taking my dogs to them and paying them. Then I'm sending them clients. So you got to yeah. make me a fucking priority. And ain't that, oh, we don't think we can fit you in. Shit, when it comes down to some major shit that I got to get done, you need to make sure I'm priority because I'm sending you business. Yeah, he shouldn't. Yeah, they shouldn't turn you away, right? Where, because and, you're spending and, thousands and thousands yeah, of dollars. Yeah. I go in there and I need some shit done. I got one vet. You know, a, a lot of vets they want to get paid right then. I got a vet I can get credit from. Mm -hmm. Hey, just put that on my bill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you bring in a business, don't sell yourself short. You got to value your own self and what you bring to the table. Mm -hmm. yep. You know what I'm saying? So that's another thing. Uh, developing a relationship with a vet. Now, I got a connection. When we talk about going to these shows, I got a connection now, bro. I could get the medicine. Same medicine you go to the vet. I get it at half price. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can find the I medication. I get it at half price because yep. I got a plug that even the, the medicine that's called, uh, what they call, that they have to keep in the box is called, uh, that's a certain classification of medicine. The doctors have to administer themselves. Mm -hmm. You can't get it. But when you go to shows and you're networking for people with people, some of that medicine you can get. They know how to get it. They know how to get it, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But if you're sitting in yellow corner, sitting in Arkansas, and just dealing with the folks in Arkansas that ain't got the connection, you're going to always be with that. Mm -hmm. So when you move around, you're making connections, you're networking, you're mm -hmm. dealing with folks, you're seeing what folks got. There are certain people I could pull up and I, I ain't got to have a dime, man. I said, look, I want that. I, that's the one I want right there. I'll go on and get it. Mm -hmm. And this business, your word got to be good. Yes, yes, yeah. Make your word good. You have to have somebody to work with in this business. Yeah, it's going to be times that you want to make moves, especially when you're getting started. You ain't got the cash right then, but you see mm -hmm. something that you like. If your name is good, you can get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just make sure you keep your name good. Yeah. I had a client tell me this. Listen, I got a I got a ninety seven percent customer satisfaction rate. I got a client pissed the hell off at me right now. Mm. That's the shit that happened eight months ago. I tell a motherfucker, I'm not gonna lose money. Because you're telling me you know how to take care of dogs and you're doing everything wrong. Them puppy pads, if that dog chew that puppy pad, it's toxic. It's oh, going to throw diarrhea. Mm -hmm. Woman called me, she said, uh, uh, this dog has just been throwing diarrhea everywhere. Now, I don't know, I already looked on her page. I see that she got a bullet that's about to drop puppies. Now, this, this corso might be too much for her when she got this whole litter to deal with. And this corso is a puppy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You got you getting an eight week corso, but you finna drop these bullets. Everybody can't manage that like that. Mm -hmm. So now she's trying to make excuses to get a refund on the dog. So I mm -hmm. said, uh, send me pictures of the, you know, send me pictures of everything. She sent it to me. I didn't say nothing to her. I took the dog. I held the dog for a few days. I said, sister, said, you come get your dog. I said, the dog, you know, boo boo solid, running around. I did my assessment. Ain't nothing wrong with it. She didn't want to get the dog. She wanted the money back. I told her, no. I said, sis, look. So you remember when I told you about them puppy pads and you were telling me you knew about dogs and, you know, this and that, that? I said, you see this this, this poop that you sent me? You see that little blue in there? That blue, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you didn't want to hear that when I was telling you about not using them puppy pads like that and encouraged the dog to use the bathroom in the house. Mm -hmm. If you want it to be a house dog, 
don't use these. I don't recommend that. I don't use puppet pads. I got some dogs that's housebroken. I do not use puppet pads because if you chew them, if you chew them, they're going to throw diarrhea. Mm -hmm. And now that's diarrhea you got to worry about for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. Because you you too lazy to get up and take the damn dog outside to use bathroom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you're gonna have the dog in the house, initially it's some work. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's why I tell people don't take on no three, four, five dogs at one time. Get that That's dog, right. train that dog, you know what I'm saying? Get that dog acclimated to the house if you're gonna keep and then if you want to add a dog later on down the road, that's fine. But it's better that way. Dog, you're trying to take care of in the house, the dog sitting there, well. You got to mm -hmm. go to work. You're frustrated. When you get up and you got to, you know, the dog got to go outside. When the dog wake up, the dog got to go outside and use the bathroom. Yeah. After the dog get to eat, the dog got to go outside and use the bathroom. Yeah. Before you go to sleep, I don't give a fuck this. You just took a shower. You fresh and you clean and you about to do your thing. That dog got to fucking go out and use the bathroom. Yeah. When well, you, you get multiple puppies. That, if you're not willing to do that, don't have the mindset to say, I'm going to have a house dog. Because it's, it's right. a list. Probably about the first um, I'll say at least the first 30 days, it's some work. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. But you got you, multiple. If you got a family, you know what I'm saying? Your wife or your husband, your son or your daughter, y'all work together. Get the puppy on the schedule. Uh, you mm -hmm. take the dog at this time and this time. Okay, son, you know you go to school at this time. I want you to mess with the dog, but after the time you get out of school, I want you to take the dog out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I'm a man. I work over here. I could take the dog out in the morning time I get up. I get mm -hmm. up at six o'clock in the morning. Let me go and take the dog out. Let the dog use the bathroom, you know, for 15 minutes. And don't send the dog outside and not watch the dog. Mm -hmm. I, 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 uh, I had to get into another client ass because I'm telling you, the dog will eat anything. It's a puppy. It don't know no better. It's just like a baby. And you telling me you done sat the dog outside and then went in the house and left the little puppy outside for an hour. You don't know what he digging up some. Because you just got to that property. You don't know what's on that yard that he digging up. Mm -hmm. He don't not have no immunity to deal with. So you mm -hmm. just got in the house a year ago, and now you got an eight-week-old puppy in the backyard digging. Yeah. <laughs> or you got sticks in the yard and the dog eating sticks. Mm -hmm. He's going to throw diarrhea. Dog picking up a rock. I have some people that'll get a dog from me, and I thought, tell them this shit in my office, bro. They'll get outside and immediately sit the dog down and get to talking to me and not pin. I'm like, the dog got the rock in his mouth. The mm -hmm. dog got a leaf in his mouth. It's going to mm -hmm. throw down real. I just told you this. <laughs> not yeah. even 20 minutes ago. Right. So I document that in my head. I said, this is the client that's probably going to have some issues down the road because he don't listen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He ain't listen. Mm -hmm. With me, this shit is serious, bro. Mm -hmm. You don't listen. I told, I gave my my little cousin a, 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 a puppy for his um, daughter's birthday. Cuz, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. So on, so on, so on, so on. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Man, I went over there to goddamn dog in a horrible condition. I said, where the fucking dog house at? They got a little crate. One of the crates that you carry around mm -hmm. and the doors are They trying to use that as a dog house. I'm like, hell no, man, we don't do it like that. My other cousin, he got a, a, a pit bull. He didn't want to pay some money for a dog. He bought a dog from a man. The dog was three weeks old. Called me, cuz, man, I need to, we, can you do some shots for me? I said, oh, what you got? Oh, man, I got a puppy, man. I said, I don't do shots until six weeks. Oh, I said, how old is the puppy? He's three weeks old. I said, meet me at your mama house. He was embarrassed. He didn't know. Mm -hmm. He done paid by folk for hundred dollars for the dog. The dude had already got his money. He's sick and tired of the puppies. He got his money. He don't want the responsibility of coming to take him from. So he's sending the motherfuckers out at three weeks old. That's crazy. I got him on the phone. It was him and it was another brother. His partner had bought two dogs. I got him on the phone. All of them on the three. But I said, "Listen, here, man." I explained to him who I, who I am. So, man, I went to school. I've been doing this for a long time. So what I need you to do is take these puppies back from these young brothers, put it back with his mama, and they're going to come back and get the puppy from you in three weeks. When I explained to him and told him who I was, and my, knowing my name, carry weight in this city, he said, all right, man, no problem. He's an older brother. But why do them like that? Because they don't know. Right. It's crazy. 
know what I'm saying? Yes. Why do them like that? You done got your money, they done paid you. Now you want to go on and get rid of the dogs. You don't want to take take them to at least six weeks. Mm-hmm. Come on, man. Yeah. They took the dogs back, they got them in six weeks. I gave them their shots. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. got them all the way up to the point where they got to, you know, they got to go and get their last shot when they go get their rabies shot. But I looked out for them. They don't let Ooh. nobody use y'all like that, man. Man, that's crazy. But God. there's people that's doing it. Yeah. They're doing it. Because mm-hmm. they just, after the money, they feel like, man, I got the money. I, I ain't got no responsibility now. Whoop mm-hmm. whoop. I had a lady that she sent me her last piece of money for one of her dogs. And I got the dog in Wapasika. The, the puppy is, is four weeks old. I'm not going to give her that dog at four weeks old. No. Then I noticed, too, you have people that's breeding. You know, you said it's it's a lot, a lot of people at the bottom. They do this. When they bring they, bullshit. They not only the bullshit, but just <laughs> if the puppies get too old, they be trying to, you know, just dish them off. You know what I mean? Like that, you know. <laughs> yeah, but they they, well, they well, they really can't handle it because they really don't put in the time or effort of building their kennel. They don't want to go, they don't want a website, they don't want to be on social media, they just yeah. want to. I'm I'm, I'm gonna just have some take, puppies. They ain't gonna be easy to sell. They not take, easy to sell. Them goddamn puppies are not gonna sell themselves. I they promise. Not. Yeah, they are not gonna sell themselves. And if you got a top, this is what you got to do. I'm gonna explain to you what I do. I started out when I started out selling puppies, Roddy's. I was selling them for four five hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Four five hundred dollars. My mentor that has over 30 years of training German breeds, the Roddy, the uh, Shepherd, Malinois, they was telling me seven years ago, man, you need to raise your price. Your price is like... I knew that, but I wanted to, I wanted to wait. I wanted to build my clientele up, become better known. I wanted to make sure I had decent dogs. As I did that, I raised the price to 700 then I wind up going to 800, 900. Now, if you're buying a dog from me, a Roddy, you can't get a Roddy from me for under $1,000. Okay? I got some puppies on the ground now, some $1,100 dogs, $2,500 dogs. But I base my prices on, of my puppies based upon my assessment of the litter. The repeat breedings, I know what it's going to bring to the table. This is what I expect. I always say it. That for a couple of years, I want to make my puppies real reasonable for people that want a nice puppy. Yeah. I think I do, do I, know, I sell my puppies too cheap? Yes. Mm-hmm. I know that. I'm going to move my puppies up when, in my head, I'm comfortable with moving them up. Okay. Mm-hmm. So certain puppies may be, uh, I may be selling them, quote unquote, under what the market is. It all depends. If a person tells me I'm not going to breed, I just want a nice puppy. I would. Re- I don't have a problem reducing the price because now, see, when you when you selling a dog with papers, that costs. You paying extra yeah. for that. Right. Breeding rights, you paying extra for that. Uh, if you say, man, I want the ears cropped, you paying extra for that. Everything that that person does, you paying extra for it. Even though I say, uh, the dog gonna come with a health certificate, microchip, we're gonna crop the ears. That's already in the price. Believe you me, I'm not. Oh yeah. I'm not doing a bunch of stuff for free. That's yeah. in the price. Yeah, it costs money to get yeah, the ears cropped. It costs money to do well, all that. Yeah, they uh, call it costs money. <laughs> yeah. And it, it costs it costs money to do it. And most vets in Arkansas is not going to do it when they're a certain age. There's a lot of vets that's not going to crop at six, seven weeks. They not. Mm-hmm. I had a vet that I was taking a dog to and uh, come in there and you had me scheduled. They came in there, they looked at the ears. I said, oh, Muhammad, it ain't ready. Come back in so many days. I went back, they looked at the ears, it's not ready. That's a vet that's licensed. I got a brother that cropped for me. He's not a vet. He's good at what he do. Very good at what he do. He don't charge as much as a vet and I could get a deal at six weeks. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. See what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I can't share his contact information with nobody because right. one of the fools that he did it for wind up running his mouth and had a vet call him. Vet wanted yeah. him to do do his ears for him because they were so good. 
Yeah. And he was like, he just he totally quit dealing with the dude. Don't call, <laughs> don't have these folks calling me. Right, 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 right. That's crazy. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, so uh, you, you know, you got to know what to share with people and what not to share with people. Yeah. To do for a person to, to operate on your dog or do an operation on your dog, it's it's illegal. Yeah, it is, yeah. It's against the law. Mm -hmm. So it had to be somebody that this dude, I could trust this dude. These are my puppies. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, no, I'm take it to the take it to the vet, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm taking on the responsibility. Yeah. And all of that yeah. shit. But right. the, you run into a problem because here's what you get, here's what you're dealing with. Most people want their ears cropped and get a dog a better look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's easy to market the dog if he's already cropped. But then on this hand, you got vets saying, well, we're not going to crop until three months. Let's say it's three months. You run into all type of problems because number one, how are you going to separate that litter? If you yeah. got a litter of 10 and you're going to crop all of them, how are you going to separate? You got enough space to separate 10 puppies? Yeah, and then the other thing is too, the uh, uh, the 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 customer going to want the ears crop because it's it, it's getting harder to find ear cropping, right? And they don't want to deal with that. They don't want to pay in some states. It all depends on where you're going. Six or seven hundred dollars. Oh yeah, but something road. that you could get did in Arkansas for three hundred dollars. Shoot, up the road from me, uh, Fairville, they six hundred. They, they got a six hundred pr price tag. I usually had to go over into Missouri to get them done. Right. Mm -hmm. So, once again, that's relationship building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, yep. regardless to what is what is charged, when I go to a person that I know that I trust that can do it, they ain't gonna deny me if I have to pay them extra. Right, my shit gonna be done. It's gonna be done right. It's gonna Let be me... done by somebody that know how to sanitize, mm -hmm. properly sanitize, properly clean. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of shit you got to think about. You somebody, you know. When that when that dog get on that operating table, you got to know that the utensils, everything is clean. And I can say this because I'm telling you, all vets don't clean well. When I, uh -huh. This this is what I want to ask you to do, brother, because you already got this going. Yeah. Once a month, schedule one of these and see can we let's see can we uh I will work with you. Let's see can we get some people that's been showing to come on, and let's see can we get people around from around the country. To share like this, because okay, yeah, I'm a student. I'm still learning. I'm going to continue mm -hmm. to learn, and I, I would like to be able to come on here at least once a month to talk mm -hmm. to people all around the country that deal with the breed, and uh, yeah. that way it ain't no excuse. A lot, a lot of us got excuses. We just don't, we don't know. Right, right. But when we make the knowledge available to these mm -hmm. people, there's mm -hmm. no reason why they should be saying, well, "I didn't know," and honestly. Well, and honestly, it's not their fault. They don't know. They don't have mentors. They don't. Uh, uh, it's, it's a lot of stuff that just 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 not there. So let's work. Uh, me and you, whoever else you can find, to close the gap in Arkansas. Right, right. Let's see who's serious about it. Right. Let's see who we can find. If it's three or four of us, let's go to us. Just catch a plane and and, and 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 get us a hotel room and let's let's go to a few shows. Right, Let's go right. And move around the country and make some shit happen. For yeah, what, uh, it's yeah. happening with the Roddy, and I see the possibility of us happening with the Corso. That just a handful of us, if any number five and ten, all the way at the top of the game as it relates to the Corso. It would be I mean, nice. It would be nice. We're going to be definitely doing more shows, and but I tell you what, a lot of people is going to be out of state because we got. I don't know if you know Gypsy Stratton. He'll be back coming mm -hmm. on the show. And yeah, but it'd be nice too to do what you're doing, but to have you come in and chime in on some you know, uh other guests to right. us out of state. So yeah, be I'm down. And, 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 and you know, there there are there are different components. Like if we know who is uh who who has the best reputation in the state for training the course of. There That'd are certain be, yeah. there are certain uh there are certain trainers that uh they don't want to deal with the Corso. I noticed that. Yeah, yeah. I know it, two professional trainers that don't. So who 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 has enough but, knowledge and enough? But skill? why? But why is it? Well, 
Well, their their perspective is their perspective is that the course of look. I'm going to answer that question next time we do a live. My wife okay, is coming. Hey, okay. peace. Yeah, hey, peace, brother. Keep, uh, yeah, uh, continue to grow, develop, and do your thing. We will, brother. Thank you for right, thank peace. you for coming on. Th All right. Thank you, my brother. All right. See you later.